in this video we're going to look at the crossed clays and condensation. So this is different from the, the prior video and we looked at just the clays and condensation which was a self condensation of an ester. Now we're going to look at when you have two different esters, what are the potential products that you can form. So say for example we're starting with ethyl acetate. So we have ethyl acetate, this is one of our esters. We have another ester. ethyl propanoate. We're then treating that under basic conditions with sodium ethoxide and then we're going to do our aqueous acidic workup. So we want to figure out what the potential products are and we want to be methodical about determining how those products can form. So in either of these esters they both have a single alpha carbon. This ester happens to have three hydrogens on the alpha, this has two. We saw in the prior example that we form an enolate. The enolate then attacks the electrophile which is the, the starting ester. So let's go ahead and identify the enolate electrophile pairs and that will help us determine the products that we're forming. So for example, we'll start a table here call this electrophile. Then the coupling partner is the enolate, so that's the nucleophile. Let's go ahead and write down scenario one here, so ethyl acetate as the electrophile. If it just does a self-condensation, it's going to react with this enolate. We'll give that a product that we'll call A and, and we'll draw A. So so that's going to react with an enolate, that's the nucleophile this is the electrophile partner, so in the self-condensation. Here's our sodium enolate. So these two will react to form, we'll call this product A. So alpha carbon here attacks this carbon, it's the same mechanism as we've done before. So product A will be this molecule. So let's go ahead and, and switch the electrophile now. And we're going to use our coupling partner here. Let's keep the enolate the same. So this is our first example of, of the crossed clason. This will give us B. So now to, notice now we, we, we formed two different products based on these scenarios. So in, in the next two examples that we're going to show, the enolate's going to change, and then we'll use these uh, electrophiles here. So ethyl acetate, that's going to now react with the enolate of this compound. So we'll call this product C. So notice now the alpha carbon is bearing a methyl group. And finally, we've done self-condensation, cross-condensation, cross-condensation, the last possible 
example is a self condensation of the ethyl propanoate with its own enolate. So we're keeping that enolate the same in this example as well. We want to balance our charge here with the sodium. And we're going to call this product D. So now we extend that chain. This is still going to have a methyl group. So we've, we've formed uh, four possible products. So you would likely get a statistical distribution of these. And looking at the functionality, they're all beta keto esters. So this reaction is likely going to produce four compounds. And so how, how would we determine uh, the ratio in which they're formed? It would likely be a statistical distribution of them. So let's think about using carbon NMR for one. Let's, let's do the unique number of carbons in each. So we'll say C13 and we'll, we'll get a tally and see what, how we can differentiate these. So the ethyl portion, the alcohol portion here of the ester, that's always going to have two unique carbons for all of them. So that's two, three, four, five, six. So that'll have six unique carbons in the NMR, C13 NMR. So again, two three, four, five, six, seven. So if we just had these two, we could differentiate them by the carbon NMR. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we, we run into a little bit of trouble in terms of the carbon because that has seven as well. And then finally, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would have eight. So we have one with six, two with seven, one with eight. So we, we kind of run into a little bit of trouble here with the two that have seven, but the other ones we can um, differentiate just based on the carbon count. What about our unique sets of hydrogens? Let's, let's go ahead and do that analysis and see if that can help us differentiate these in the mixture. So again, the ethyl draw that out so everyone can see. There's our ethyl group. We have one, two, three, four unique sets of protons. One, two, three, four, five. So that helps us out differentiating those two. We have a six and a four pair, a seven and a five pair. So one, two, three, four, five. So that 7575 again. We can do a little deeper analysis into the proton beyond the unique number of protons. So here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that helps us out as well. So, how would we then differentiate um, these two pairs, seeing it's the, the carbon and the proton both have 7, 5? Well, this is when we would have to get into the, the splitting argument. So, again, the ethyls, we really couldn't differentiate between them. Let's go ahead and look at the alpha carbon here. So, alpha, alpha prime, and then we'll call this beta prime just to keep that uh, consistent. Let's go down here, alpha, now beta, and then alpha prime. So that alone helps us differentiate somewhat. So in, in these unique signals, this will integrate to 2. This will integrate to 2. That will integrate to 3. This alpha proton will integrate to 1. This beta will integrate to 3. And this alpha prime will integrate to 3. So by integration, we're, we've been able to differentiate um, these protons. So the signals should integrate to 2, 2, to 3, and here 3, 3, 1. So if we were to take this one level further, um, in, in the current keto form, uh, this integrating to 2 would be a singlet. 
there's no neighboring protons. This unique signal here has three, so it would integrate to a quartet. This unique signal has two neighbors, so in it, it would integrate to a triplet. So going down to this alpha prime, no neighbors, that's going to integrate to a singlet. So we've, we've differentiated already. Um, so in this keto form, um, this signal that integrates to one, it's splitting here would be a quartet because it has three neighbors. And then the splitting of this methyl group, since it has one, would be a doublet. So even though 7575, five, the uniqueness doesn't separate them, when we do a deeper analysis, we see that we can actually differentiate them. So that's been a review of the crossed Claisen condensation. When you have two different types of esters, treating under the, the Claisen conditions. We've identified the electrophiles, the enolates, the products, and how we can differentiate them through C13 and proton NMR.